Okay, now let's talk about lipids. So lipids are made of long chains of hydrocarbons, usually with some other sort of head group attached and the type of head group and the, the arrangement of the long hydrocarbon chain depend or affects the function of the molecule and how it behaves. And so lipids have a lot of different functions. Uh, they're probably two most important or uh, best known functions are as energy storage and as the structure of the membrane. So the, the cell itself that's made of a, when we say it's made of a lipid bilayer, that's what we mean, two layers of lipids uh, that form a membrane. And that is in fact what makes the cell a cell. That's what keeps the inside of the cell separate from the outside. Uh, and then lipids have other functions and other, uh, depending on organisms, so um, in animals that uh, that are able to regulate their own body heat, um, which includes mammals, uh, fat uh, or lipid molecules form fat, and fat is important for controlling temperature because it acts as a insulator of heat. Um, also, it can uh, lipids or molecules derived from lipids can act as uh, water repellents. So um, a lot of uh, skin oils and uh, uh, molecules that organisms use to keep water uh, come from getting into their skin is made from lipids. Um, various pigments that uh, some animals and plants use to have uh, bright colors are derived from lipids. And then there are a number of enzyme cofactors and signaling molecules that are lipids or lipid derived uh, as well. So broadly speaking, we can divide up lipids into those that are uh, involved in storage, those that are involved in structure of the membrane uh, one way or another, and then um, others or the lipids that, that have uh, one of those other jobs I mentioned. So the, the storage lipids um, include the so-called fatty acids and the things derived from fatty acids, including uh, triacylglycerols and waxes, and then the structural lipids uh, include the phospholipids and glycolipids, um, and then some complex molecules called ether lipids. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, types of molecules that perform those other functions. So a fatty acid is just a carboxylic acid that has a long chain of hydrocarbons that are usually unbranched. So the, the chain can be <clears throat> uh, from 20, 30, 40 carbons long. And uh, the number is usually an even number of carbons, so uh, at least four though. And there are basically two types of fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids have no carbon-carbon double bonds, so all of the bonds within the molecule are single bonds. And then unsaturated fatty acids have a double bond, at least one double bond. So a monounsaturated fatty acid contains one carbon-carbon double bond somewhere along the chain. And then polyunsaturated fatty acids contain more than one. So uh, you can have diunsaturated and triunsaturated and so on. Um, there's a uh, pretty simple nomenclature for fatty acids. So fatty acids have a systematic name, which is pretty much uh, the standard organic chemistry name for these molecules. So for example, this molecule, which has 18 carbons um, and one double bond, we call octadecanoic acid. So uh, octa means eight, deca means 10. So octadeca means 18. And then because it has one double bond, it's octadecene as opposed to octadecane, which would be uh, if, if it were the <clears throat> saturated form with no uh, double bonds. And then we say octadecanoic acid because it has a carboxylic acid group at the end. And then uh, we note the the double bond uh, by the position of the carbon uh, that's closest to the carbonyl group. So if you know the rules for numbering carbon atoms in an organic molecule, uh, for fatty acids, the, the carbon with the carboxylic acid group is number one, and then we just go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so the double bond is between the ninth and tenth carbons. So that's why it's nine octadecanoic acid. And in this case, the double bond is in the cis uh, 
conformation. So that's why it's cis nine octadecanoic acid. That's that's the full long name for this molecule. So uh, for any given fatty acid, you can use the same system to name it. Um, but of course, um, these uh, big molecules uh, are hard to uh, remember with their systematic names. So uh, most of them have common names based on sort of where they are derived from or where they're found. So for example, this molecule is also called oleic acid. So there are two different numbering systems for indicating the position of the double bond. Uh, one's called the delta numbering system, which just uses the position of the first carbon that's closest to the uh, the carbon-carbon double bond, I mean the, the carbonyl carbon. So uh, in this case, we call this uh, 18-1 delta-9. So again, <clears throat> 18 because there are 18 carbons. Um, the 1 represents the fact that there's one double bond. And then delta-9 means it's the ninth carbon starting at the, the carbonyl carbon, which is number 1. Um, and then there's another system that's sometimes used called the omega system, which is very similar, uh, except that the, the position is uh, relative to the terminal carbon, the one at the very end. Um, now in this case, this molecule is still uh, number nine because if you count from the end, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, uh, 10, nine, we say it's still uh, the, the carbon that's furthest away from that terminal is still the ninth one, so we call it omega nine. Um, but if you see, for example, um, if you've probably heard of omega-3 fatty acids, that's what that means. The omega-3 fatty acids have a double bond that's uh, three carbons away from that uh, terminal carbon. Um, and these are just more examples. So again, the, the systematic names, uh, especially for the, the saturated fatty acids, are pretty simple. Um, so 12 carbons, 12 is dodeca. Um, so we call it dodecanoic acid, uh, 14 is tetradecanoic acid, uh, and so on. Little n in front of those symbols means that uh, it stands for normal, and it just um, means that those are the normal forms of those alkyl groups, meaning that they're, they're not branched and they don't contain double bonds. Um, uh, icoso means 20, so the, the 20 carbon ones are in icosanoic acid, and then 24 is just tetracosanoic, which means uh, 4 plus 20. Um, and again, you can also see the common names over here. Um, now, you don't need to memorize the common names, but you should probably be able to, to figure out the structure from the systematic names of these molecules and vice versa. Um, these are some of the unsaturated fatty acids. So again, the, with the delta system being used here. So with one double bond, we say 16-1 delta-9, which means it's um, cis-9 hexadecanoic acid. So the, the ene in there also represents the fact that it's a double bond. If we have two double bonds or more, we indicate the number of double bonds in the name too. So um, linol linoleic acid, for example, has two double bonds, and they are uh, at positions 9 and 12. Delta 9 and 12, so we call it 18 to, uh, 9, 12, Delta 9, 12, but its long name is cis cis, so they're both in the cis configuration. 9, 12, octadeca dienoic acid, so octadeca meaning 18, diene meaning two double bonds, uh, and so on. And so the names can get pretty complicated pretty fast, so this thing down here with 20 carbons, four double bonds, we say cis 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 cis, cis 5, 8, 11, 14. Icosa tetraenoic acid. So um, the the names can get kind of complicated, but again, if you just break it down into the individual components, it's pretty easy to pretty straightforward to figure out the structures from the names um, and vice versa. Now the the overall structure of fatty acids. Um, does affect how they behave. So uh, again, saturated fatty acids have no double bonds. They're all single bonds. Now single bonds, uh, single carbon-carbon bonds are free to rotate. So a, a given uh, saturated fatty acid can take a lot of different conformations or shapes, but um, most of the most of the most stable conformation is basically a straight line like this. So this three-dimensional model represents more or less what a typical fatty acid is going to look like most of the time. Um, whereas unsaturated fatty acids, because they have double bonds and because uh, 
those double bonds, especially if they're they're uh, in the cis conformation, require the the chain to kind of be bent a little bit. So unsaturated fatty acids um, are not able to be straight like saturated fatty acids. For that reason, uh, when you have saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids packed together, um, they have different properties. So saturated fatty acids, because they're all the same shape, um, even if they have different lengths, they tend to pack together into these uh, nice little rows. In fact, that's why most of the plasma membrane is made up of um, phospholipids, which as we'll see later, uh, have two chains, but both of them are mainly um, saturated fatty acids and then a bunch of unsaturated fatty acids together uh, because they're all basically sort of bent they tend to pack more in a less disorderly way in a less orderly way and uh, that affects things like the melting point so saturated fatty acids for example have a higher melting point um, than unsaturated fatty acids um, and we'll come back and uh, talk about why that matters um, in a bit so triacylglycerols are the uh, main storage form of uh, lipids in uh, most organisms. So um, in most, uh, especially animals, uh, most of the, the fat tissue is made up, or fat molecules are made up of these, these triacylglycerols. And so a triacylglycer triacylglycerol is really just three fatty acids that are connected to each other by a glycerol group. So glycerol um, is, uh, this is glycerol up here, it's just three carbons, each of which has an OH group. And so uh, at each of those OHs, if you replace it with a, uh, a fatty acid, um, and the acid is ester linked to that glycerol, then you get a triacylglycerol. And so most, uh, this is a mixed triacylglycerol because it contains three different fatty acids. So it's one steer oil, because this this chain here is a stearic acid to linoleol because this is linoleic acid on the second carbon and then uh, palmitic acid on the third one so it's palmitoyl so that's the long name of that molecule but it's just a mixed triacylglycerol and you can have triacylglycerols that all where all three of the fatty acids are the same um, also if they are different um, it's worth mentioning that the number two carbon of the glycerol group here is actually chiral which can affect um, how it interacts with uh, certain enzymes, for example. Um, one thing that makes triacylglycerols different from uh, just basic fatty acids or plain fatty acids is that they are nonpolar. So uh, a typical fatty acid by itself will have a polar group. So the carboxylic acid group is polar, um, but because it's usually um, negatively charged at neutral pH, even if it is, has a, a hydrogen there, it'll still be polar. So it has a polar uh, head and a nonpolar tail, but uh, triacylglycerols are almost entirely uh, nonpolar. So the glycerol group, once it's ester linked to the uh, the fatty acids, uh, they're no longer polar because carbon oxygen bonds uh, do not have a lot of polarity to them. So that means that they are, uh, of course, non soluble in water. Um, and uh, they also have very low density so because you have these long chains that um, again often don't really fit together well because they all have different lengths um, they they tend to not take up a lot of space um, like I said uh, for most organisms triacylglycerols are the main storage form for lipids so uh, for uh, animals that mostly means fat so so fat molecules in in the body of animals are called tri are are made of triacylglycerols um in in the triacylglycerols that come from plants we often call oils um now the the difference between the two uh of course is mainly just their um, whether they're solid at room temperature or liquid at room temperature so a fat is typically uh, solid at room temperature oils are liquid at room temperature and the reason for that has to do with the kinds of fatty acids they're made of. So uh, plant oils like olive oil or vegetable oil or canola oil um, and so on tend to be liquid at room temperature because they have uh, a large uh, proportion of their molecules contain long unsaturated fatty acids. So longer fatty acids uh, also have a, have a um, uh, lower melting point than short fatty acids. Um, and so uh, that's why oils 
tend to be liquid because they are they are made mostly of unsaturated uh, fatty acids um, that are longer. Um, whereas beef fat, for example, which is the, the kind of fat um, that that comes from animals, uh, including beef, tends to be hard and solid at room temperature because it has a higher proportion of saturated fatty acids, which you can kind of fit together more nicely, uh, pack more in a more orderly way. Um, and uh, uh, they are also are, are longer. Whereas butter, which is um, you know uh, a fat derived from uh, milk, uh, is a, a more even mixture of saturated and unsaturated fat, fatty acids. And it contains a large proportion of short um, fatty acids, so between 4 and 14 carbons long. So uh, it, unlike uh, beef fat or, or body fat from an animal, tends to be uh, a soft solid at room temperature. So that's that's why those different um, uh, substances have those different consistencies. Um, uh, also, by the way, uh, a lot of um, one way to make a an oil or a, uh, a vegetable oil, for example, a solid at room temperature is to put it through a process called hydrogenation. So, uh, of course, a, a uh, unsaturated fatty acid um, is missing uh, hydrogens here and here at the double bond. So hydrogenating an unsaturated fatty acid basically just means adding those hydrogens back, which returns the double bond to a single bond. And when that happens, uh, it goes from being, uh, again, more disorderly and having a low melting point um, to having a high melting point. So, so hydrogenated vegetable oil um, can be a solid at room temperature uh, simply for that reason. Um, so, so if you have like margarine, for example, or one of those butter substitutes, that's usually what you're eating is, is hydrogenated vegetable oil of some kind. Um, now, the problem with hydrogenating um, uh, unsaturated fatty acids into saturated fatty acids is that sometimes you can turn uh, again most uh, unsaturated fatty acids are are in the cis configuration but um, the process of hydrogenation can turn some of those uh, instead of turning them into saturated fatty acids can turn them into trans unsaturated fatty acids so it can just switch the conformation of the double bond from cis to trans and for reasons that uh, aren't entirely known, trans fatty acids uh, are, are very bad at causing uh, lots of kinds of heart disease. So the way they interact with um, other, other uh, enzymes that process fats produces uh, things like uh, uh, cholesterol plaques and so on. So um, uh, that's why trans fatty acids or trans fats is what they're usually called um, are bad for you and again they they're produced um, mostly um, as a byproduct of hydrogenating vegetable oil into saturated uh, fatty acids and, uh, and it's also why um, those kinds of uh, uh, foods that have a lot of trans fats um, are often considered unhealthy so so usually uh, the reason for for hydrogenating vegetable oil is to make it uh, uh, more stable and shelf uh, have a longer shelf life at room temperature um, and that's why it's also used as frying oil uh, a lot of times vegetable oil is just cheaper and easier to, to get a hold of than um, uh, animal fat and so um, uh, that's why it's used as cooking oil but uh, by hydrogenating it and using it um, as a substitute for for butter or for um, animal fat you increase the uh, amount of trans fats, and that's why uh, those kinds of foods that have trans fats are bad for you. Um, this is just a picture of what um, your uh, fat tissue looks like. So uh, adipose tissue is the technical name, but but fat tissue consists of these fat cells called adipocytes. And, and you can see uh, in this picture where they've taken a piece of adipose tissue and sliced it really thin, um, then, then uh, stained the cell for uh, proteins and, and nucleic acids. In fact, the, the uh, red uh, one, uh, I believe the, the blue part are proteins, the red part are the nucleic acids. But in any case, um, those, those clear areas that look like just bubbles, those are the cell bodies of those fat cells. Um, the, the fat itself isn't there, so when they, they prepare these slides, they usually rinse them in a solvent that dissolves um, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
nonpolar molecules like fat molecules. So um, what you're left with is basically just empty space, but that's where the fat used to be. So those fat cells are just uh, cells with very little uh, aqueous cytoplasm. They're just packed full of those triacylglycerols. Um, and then whenever the body needs energy, they can be broken down and removed from the cell. But then whenever uh, they're needed, they're just stored in there. Um, and of course, fat tissue has other functions rather aside from just storing energy. Um, they also, again, like I said, are important for insulation, um, cushioning certain parts of the body, and so on. Uh, plants have a similar uh, kind of tissue that also stores plant oils in them as well. Um, and then waxes are another kind of uh, uh, storage uh, lipid-like molecule. So a wax molecule actually consists of two long hydrocarbon chains, one that's a fatty acid and one that's just a long uh, alcohol. Um, and they're, again, ester linked together. Um, these, again, are nonpolar, um, so they're water repellent, and they have uh, a relatively high melting point because, uh, again, they're usually unsaturated, and so they have, uh, are saturated, and therefore they, they stick together well. <clears throat> um, waxes show up in, in a lot of animals, again, as, uh, as skin oils to help keep water uh, away from skin or fur or feathers. Um, insects like bees, for example, produce wax. So bees wax, the stuff they make their hive out of, um, is this stuff up here. So this is actually uh, the molecule that beeswax is made of. Um, again, because it repels water, it also has a high melting point. It stays solid at relatively high temperatures. So that's why it can also act as sort of a, a structural uh, element as well. And so um, that's just another category of that type of lipid. And so, um, again, as energy storage, uh, fat is um, similar to sugar. So we, we talked about uh, sugars a little bit, and later on we'll talk about how uh, sugars especially are broken down for energy. But the, the molecule that most animals store uh, energy in uh, in the form of sugars are glycogens. And so uh, you might wonder why there are there two different types of uh, storage molecules for energy. Um, and uh, the reason is there are some important uh, practical differences between fats and sugars that make them useful for different purposes. So uh, for one thing, fats, uh, fat molecules are less oxidized. That means that um, more of those carbons are available to be um, oxidized uh, for energy, which means you can get more energy out of a given weight of fat than you can out of a given weight of sugar. Um, and then uh, also because fats are non-soluble, which means they, they do not attract water, fat tissue contains very little water. Uh, water itself is very dense, and therefore um, it, uh, a given fat molecule uh, weighs less than a given sugar molecule, so you, you aren't carrying around as much weight. Carrying weight with the body requires using more energy, so uh, the equivalent amount of, of sugar would require a lot more uh, uh, bulk to the body. Um, whereas sugar, because it's higher density, has more energy per volume. So that means that uh, even though it weighs more, it takes up less space. And so you can, you can uh, fit more energy um, in a given volume with a sugar molecule than you can, you can with fat. So for animals that, uh, for small animals that can't uh, build large uh, tissues and body parts, um, uh, storing more energy as sugar is, is better. Plus, sugar can be broken down faster. So uh, energy from sugar can be mobilized um, more quickly than, than it generally can from fat. So, uh, so fat can be used for more long-term energy storage. And sugar and glycogen, for example, is uh, more useful for shorter-term um, situations. All right, and though, so next time we will talk about structural lipids.